My name's Top Hornet, and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft. <laughs> we are back here, and as you can see, after a little bit of a live stream, we have started the process of creating a pen or a paddock for our animals. Now, it's not completely detailed yet, and so I'm probably going to start this episode off with a fairly quick time lapse of me just adding some stuff to this and probably bringing the animals across. So we're going to bring our cows from over here, our chickens, and some of these sheep as well. Get them all situated in there, and add a few trees and a little bit of probably shrubbery, just some general landscaping and making it feel a little bit more tied into the area. Uh, obviously, this is still just some very basic cobblestone, and I need to detail that up like I have in here. But once that's done, we're going to be ready to get onto our airship. These sheep over here have been producing away like so, <laughs> and we're starting to get a decent little supply. So I'm hoping that uh, with a bit of luck, we should have enough by the time I'm finished doing this. So without wasting any more time, I'm going to get into a very quick time lapse to build this up, make it to a point that I'm happy with, and then we'll get to work on our airship. So I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back, folks. So, as you can see, we've got ourselves, all of the uh, the cows from over there and our sheep as well are in. Some of the uh, chickens made it. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we can continue to breed them up to get as many as we like. But uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I kind of just randomized what I was doing, going through adding some uh, coarse dirt and adding moss and stuff around here, I think. Let's see if we can find. <laughs> Uh, nope. Uh, nope. Uh, yeah. I added some lanterns underneath there. So we got a little bit of lighting. In fact, we will be able to actually jump up top as this sun goes down and see for the first time whether or not it's lighting up the area. Okay. From here, I'll be able to get an idea if there's any darker patches that I do want to make a bit brighter. Down you go. So we could definitely put one around uh, where that cow is, around that transition point, and maybe one up in there as well, and over this side. But actually, I've got three. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's go down here. We'll put one next to this tree. Put one over here, probably just here. And one just here. Let's jump back up top and see how that looks. Yeah, not bad. To make it a little less likely that if we drop down into there to grab something, there's hopefully not a creeper waiting or something, you know, spawned in there that we don't want. So that looks all right. It's pretty lit up. And now this whole area is fairly tied together. If I jump down here, you can see that it... Ooh, dodged it. You can see that... uh. I've blended it up a little bit with some leaves, made a little bit of process towards a path, and just generally uh, finished it up a little bit more. Now, it's places like this that I think it would be worthwhile to add a little bit of light to as well. Yeah, I can do that uh, bit by bit. We'll do one here. Yeah. <laughs> but with that, I'm going to sleep, and we'll see how much we have of the uh, the white wool. So, uh, my inventory is so full right now. So maybe we just drop a little bit off up here and let's see how much it's done. With the combination of building that and then working on this, it's probably been a couple of hours. So it should have a half decent amount built up. And the last one, nice. So that is what? 8 and 8, 16, 20, no, 18. <laughs> yes, that's how you do math. So 18 stacks. Nice. I'm hoping that that is enough to, uh, to finish the entire balloon up there. And then this will continue to run while we're working on it. So if we do need just a little bit more, we should be able to come down and grab it towards the end of the build. Now, we're going to put this uh, stuff in... An empty shulker box. 
and it's time to go down and have a look at our copper. <laughs> Most of it, I believe, is finished and uh, oxidized. Yeah, you can see a good chunk of it is. There's still some that has not done anything somehow. I missed my piece of copper. <laughs> Let's see if we can land on one. Nope. Oh. First try. So yes, all of this stuff here is ready to go. We do still have a couple of uh, newer ones, but in general, I think we should have enough. So I'm going to do the tedious task of swimming around, grabbing all of the oxidized blocks, <laughs> and uh, then we're going to get into that build. I'm kind of nervous, but I'm also super excited at the same time. It's going to be nice to finally have something interesting sitting up in the sky. All right. Let's get to it. So, many drowned and a bunch of mining later, most of it has been gathered into my inventory. So we only actually ended up with just over two stacks of the oxidized version, but I'm not going to be using it just in the block form like that. We're actually going to come over here and turn it into the cut copper. So we can essentially get four times the amount of what we gathered. So that is the oxidized copper. Now I know a lot of people are going to be like, aren't you going to use different stages of it? Yes. The reason I've grabbed only the oxidized versions is just so that I don't fill up my inventory with the different types in different stacks. <laughs> you can also see that I managed to grab myself a trident while doing that too. So that can go and store away as well. Timkin? Oh, never. <laughs> So, so we have our copper, we've got our white wool, which has probably started to uh, go again. Yes, not that much, but it will add up as I build this. I think I'm just about ready to go. I'm going to put the trident away, just, just to be safe. And it looks like in the process of me leaving, a couple of these might have even gotten themselves ready to go as well. So, we will chuck... <laughs> another trident in there we're getting a good supply i'll put some copper away and we'll get rid of this rotten flesh as well beautiful now i'll just double check what we have down here see whether any of these have fully oxidized yet like that one over there and what about any of these doesn't seem like it. It's so strange, the randomness of it, that some of them can sometimes remain fully perfect for such a long time. But we will grab every little piece we can. <laughs> Nailed it. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and that way, we've got as much as we need, hopefully, and we'll get to make a nice big balloon. Oh, there's no turning back now. It is time. It is time to pop up there. In fact, I think I like the idea of standing just here <laughs> and looking up at the balloon like this. Let's turn off our UI. Let's zoom up there. And I will see you guys on the other side of this time lapse with an airship. I hope you all enjoy. See you soon.
And that, my friends, is an airship. <laughs> I am so proud of myself. I really didn't expect it to turn out this good. That just looks great to me. Look at the little fire that I've got up there. Now, yes, I will probably change those over for soul lanterns, but uh, that requires going up and slamming my face against the bottom of the ship, trying to play some dirt so I can get down there. So not going to do that just yet, but let's fly up and check it out. Oh, it looks so good. And I know I keep saying this, but scale-wise, it feels the right size. It's something that I'm always a little bit aware of, is when you are building something, you don't want one section to look <laughs> way bigger. Like, I wouldn't want that small farmhouse, in quotation marks, to be three times that size, but then have a windmill grind house that is smaller than it. So it's sort of trying to scale everything so that it feels like it's the correct size. And now up here, I've put a little bit of lava as though this system here is like an engine that helps to burn fuel, transfer heat up through there and create this fire to keep the balloon up and going. I've got a little bit of detail here and a captain's room, which ended up being my storage room for all the materials that I was using, which we're going to have to clear out at some point. Up top here, got myself maybe a little bit more work to do, but I like to imagine that these two things here are like handles and they're just about at, uh, at the right height for your hands to grab and a little bit futuristic, a little bit steampunky. You grab onto those to control the ship rather than something like a, uh, a wheel. And then what I've done is left the center point fixed with chains, but on the front and back, I've done a pulley system on both ends, as though depending on the air conditions, maybe it is more beneficial to have the back of the balloon slightly lower or the front of the balloon slightly lower, which makes the other side go up. So the pivot point is on those. That length of chain cannot change because that's where this needs to be. Obviously, we're stretching the imagination a little bit with how rigid this looks, but I like to imagine that maybe this uh, pipe in the middle here is slightly flexible. And then that way, as the conditions change, the crew members can come across, let out some chain on this side to lower the front, maybe help them stay a little bit more stable in the air. Just a little bit of lore behind the reasoning for me building certain things. And I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty cool. I tried to add as much detail as I could as well that felt necessary, but nothing too over the top. And in general, I'm pretty happy with this. <laughs> like... Very happy with this. And then down in here, we obviously have the spot where we will AFK. I might pretty this up slightly, but the reality of this is it's not actually for anything other than just standing here AFK. It's aesthetic. <laughs> just to add some uh, interesting stuff to our world. So yeah, I think it turned out really nice. I might change that for just some spruce wood. Yeah, that looks a bit better. So yeah. What do you guys think? I think maybe, maybe we'll just do this. <laughs> I think it turned out really well. And uh, let's jump down again and have a look behind us. Yeah. Look at that. Ah, I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> it's definitely out of my comfort zone. It's not a style of building that I've done before or a style of uh, build, I should say. But, oh, it looks good. It looks good. It seems the perfect height. It seems the perfect size. Oh man, I love it. <laughs> I actually love it. Let's have a look from some different angles, like over here, up high. It looks pretty good from the front. I feel like I've nailed the size of the balloon. It looks just about right. Just enough wide enough. Just enough wide enough <laughs> to, uh, to feel correct. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It took me just a little over two hours, about two and a half hours to uh, make. So not too bad on build time as well. I spent a lot of time uh, working on the details and just trying to make it feel correct. And I feel like I've done a pretty good job of the boat. It's not too amazing, not too detailed because it is slightly small, but 
the only thing that I feel like is maybe lacking is the transition between that higher back and this section here. Maybe it needs to be a little bit more solid and come out a little further before it drops. But we'll see. We'll see how it feels. We'll see what you guys think as we go. Oh, man. That's so exciting. <laughs> oh, good. Good. So now we have that set up. I'm actually going to clear out all of that and uh, make sure that we've, <laughs> we've gotten rid of all of the stuff in the middle of the lake. And it's probably worthwhile putting all of this away as well. Ended up having a decent little bit left. So we can definitely use this for uh, different purposes down the line. But there is one thing that I want to do just before we uh, call this done. Now, obviously, it is all oxidized. But what we can do is strip stuff. So using our axe, we can change the texture a little bit. And I want to bring some of it back to that point. I don't think I want it to go back to there. So that's going to have to uh, be redone. Or <laughs> we replace it with a piece from in here. Let's do that. Yes. Where did that go? Off the edge? <sighs> but yeah, I want to go around and just strip some of that and wax it. But that means we're going to have to go get some bees. Now, obviously, I'm probably not going to have enough wax to do it as much as I want. We're going to go out and start searching for a couple of beehives. I want to get a handful silk touched and brought back for next episode where I will start a bee farm. I'm thinking with the fact that I'm using some copper here and I'm probably going to start to implement a little bit more copper now that we have some, it'll be worthwhile to have a little bit of a bee farm building up wax so that I can make candles for around this area as well as waxing my copper. Now, I'm going to leave a lot of this stuff in here because otherwise my inventory will just forever be full. Ooh, and that was another thing. I think I want to hang some ominous banners, but I don't know where. Might get a little bit of dirt. I already had some on me, that was silly. And we might pop out the side here and hang an ominous banner there and an ominous banner there. You won't be able to see that from down on the ground, but as you fly closer, you will. It feels piratey a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit of detail. That will disappear there. <laughs> but as you get closer, you'll be able to see it. Nice. Very nice. Okay, I'll put all this away now. So, yes, I knew I had some. I've already got a couple that I've silk touched in the past when I found them. I think one of them was out when we were getting those cats. And I don't think I have any more anywhere. Oh, I've got some saddles and stuff over in here. I have a new chest for that now. <laughs> Uh, saddles and horse armor. There we go. Much better. But I don't think I have any more of these spread around. And I kind of like the texture of the, uh, the actual bee nests themselves rather than the man-made ones or the bee hives, I suppose. So I am going to make an effort to go out and grab a few of them. And since it is night time, we may as well go out right now. Because if we find any, the bees should be asleep. And so... We won't have to worry about waiting for them to get in. So, let's go for a little adventure. I'm going to head up to the top of here, because if there are any on these trees, that means that we're probably being close enough for them to be filling it up as, uh, as we've been working around the area. And hopefully, the bees are inside as well. So, we're going to have to be a little bit careful just because of the uh, night time and dealing with all these guys. God, that is a cool looking spot over there. But if we can find some nearby, that's going to be great. I'm not exactly sure how many I want at this point, but the more I can get, the better. Hello, bees. Hello, bees. Hmm. Well, can't really see anything on the top of this mountain at the moment. It's definitely possible that I've missed one because it is quite dense around here. But, unfortunately... Nothing stands out. We're going to continue to dodge all of these mobs. And... Hmm. Okay. Please don't blow up. No. Don't ruin the lily of valleys. Lily of the valleys. No. They're my favorite flower. Oh, look at you putting holes in the landscape. 
<sighs> so, instead of uh, staying up here and just wandering around with all these mobs, we are going to uh, <laughs> avoid the rest of them and head down into this birch forest because I feel like these birch forests over here are a very easy way to see them. There's something about the color that just makes that yellow brown stick out a lot. So we're going to come this way. Continuing to check, nice little lava lake, but I don't see anything that's scanned the horizon. Hmm, negative. All right. In fact, it's probably not a bad idea to just do a quick scan with the zoom key, see whether I can see anything on the side of the trees. Anything? Surely. <laughs> You always find them when you don't need them, but when you need them, you can't find them. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> we'll take down these guys first. Come on. Out your pop. Gotcha. And we will silk touch that up. Grab it. Hopefully we have a decent bit of luck in this forest. Child, not right now. Oh, two children and their parents. The beauty of walking through a birch forest is that uh, they're a lot more likely to, the third child, a lot more likely to uh, be growing with a space between the leaves, whereas uh, your oak trees tend to have the chance of growing the leaves super low, like, uh, like this, only one high, so it does make it a lot easier to see them on the side of the birch as you're wandering around. Let's see whether we can find any more before the night ends, hopefully. Let these wolves go and uh, clear the path for us, keep us safe. But the night is quickly ending, and I can't see any more. Please. Oh, wow. Oop. Hmm. Giant cave. Well, before we lose any more night time, I'm going to put myself down in a new area and keep trying. Come on. It does not look like we're going to have any luck. In this last little stretch, I will duck across to the other side, into this oak forest, see whether we have any luck here. Avoiding mobs, of course. But, if that's the case, we might go through the process of growing them ourselves in our tree farm. So I can force them to grow, guarantee some, uh, some new bees. And it looks like that's probably going to be necessary. All right. We found one at least, and I know that I've seen others around the way. Ooh, we're back at where we fought the wither. That's cool, but no bees. Ah, well. Let's go over to our tree farming area. We'll grab some flowers, and we'll see whether we can get lucky and grow a couple. I have three. I would like, at minimum, eight. So, a little bit of grind work to go, but we'll see what our luck's like. Any bees on trees? Tree bees? Bees? Trees? Hmm. Ah, well. Over to the tree farm. I think we're going to go for a few birch to start off with. And we're going to just use these white, uh, what are they? White tulips. <laughs> and hopefully have a bit of luck. We'll spread that out a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to go through the uh, quite arduous <laughs> and uh, time-consuming task of growing a bunch of these trees and hopefully getting lucky with our chance. I believe it's around a 5% chance to uh, spawn a beehive when you grow a tree next to a flower like this. And I believe it's only oak and birch. So we're going to have a bit of a time trying to get this to work. But silver linings, we'll get a little bit of wood, be able to fill up our supply. So that's okay. I will be back once I have successfully. <laughs> that's not where that goes. Successfully grabbed uh, one, two, three, four, five more. Get one on camera. Come on. Come on. Yeah, worth a try. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> it has been one hour, exactly one hour, actually. It just ticked over the minutes to exactly one hour that I've been mining away at these trees, as you can see, gathering a bunch. And that is our eighth one. Oh, finally. You look like you're stuck, my friend. Go. Get your pollen. <laughs> and then get back. There's three of them. Interesting. 
So I'm going to wait for these guys to get back in. I've managed to grab all the other ones with the bees inside of them. So hopefully we can uh, either just wait until they all decide to go in fully pollinated or wait until it turns nighttime. I'm not even sure what time of the day it is because I've been underground for an hour. We might even check that. It is in the morning. So we'll see whether we can get them all to get into that hive. And then once they're in there, I will have all of the hives that I need for my next episode. So I'm actually going to remove the tree from around here so that they uh, can all... Oh, I think... Yes. I'm just going to bite the bullet and assume that that was all three of them. I don't think I can hear any more bees around. Yeah, nice. <laughs> okay, good. Good, good, good. Oh. <laughs> I know that it probably would have been faster to... Uh, to go out and gather them manually around the area, but this is also a good way to get myself some extra spruce. Birch, not spruce. <laughs> it's definitely birch, but that's good. Now, I uh, still have plenty of saplings actually, which is lucky. I can put this away and I don't see me needing any more of that for a fair while. Nice. I'm just gonna let all of this decay and get rid of it to make sure that we get as many of the saplings back as we can renew our stocks, which is pretty easy to do. The uh, the birch seems to drop quite a lot of saplings, which is great. And then we can go pick a spot that we're going to start our bee farm in. Nice, we're getting heaps of saplings back. That's fantastic. And yeah, okay, beautiful. Now, <laughs> since we know that it's daytime, we can go out safely, not have to worry about it. I got a lot of sticks from doing that as well, which is nice. And we'll go have a look. Oh, look at it. Oh, it's so lovely. So, now I put the question to you guys. Do you think that I should make the bee farm over in this area? Maybe even beside the original house there, since we've made some space? Or, I am still planning to do a massive flower field down this side of the manor. So, that whole section there, I want to fill with fields of flowers, so that when we eventually build a church... There's like the flowers in between that people can grab to bring to the graves. So would it make sense to have a little uh, bee apiary? Is apiary the correct word? I'm not sure. But a little bee house uh, just down in there, surrounded by a bunch of flowers. Or do we bring it up here with all the farming and animal related stuff? I'd love to hear your opinions and see what you guys think that. That should be, I think, actually, interesting. Yeah, I should replace those. A little bit of an oversight, but that's okay. As you can see in there, I have lit it up slightly and put down some carpets so that I didn't have to worry about mob spawning because they were spawning. <laughs> and so I needed to make sure that it was safe in there. So yeah, all good in there. I just need to make sure that this looks good. I don't even know whether anybody else would notice it, but it is something once you know it's there, it definitely needs to be fixed up. And now, oh God. Getting down here to do these ones is going to be a little bit more painful. Or is there even any on the bottom? Yes, there is. <laughs> I can see you right in there. All right. I'm going to spend a little bit of time just, uh, oh God, <laughs> building up some scaffolding and getting those fixed up. And then I think we can call this project done. And with the sun setting and that little problem fixed, Let's have a look at, oh, look at that. In fact, let me just record this because I'll probably take a screenshot of that for the thumbnail. That is gorgeous. I really am so happy with this build and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. I think it turned out really well. And I think it's a fun little thing to add into our world. Oh, gorgeous. Floating up there. We, at this point, definitely need more. I think over time, this whole city is going to be populated with at least two more. I feel, I feel two more of different sizes would be uh, lots of fun to do over the course of this series. But as the sun sets, I want to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. In the next episode, we're going to get these bee nests to work and get ourselves some wax to uh, change up the texture of that just slightly, even though it doesn't look too bad as it is. But... If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like. It really does help the channel out and it lets me know that you guys are enjoying the content. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. 
I appreciate it a lot. With that being said, I hope you guys have still been enjoying the series lately, and I hope you're looking forward to more builds along this line. <laughs> God, it looks cool. I love it. I love it. I love that the lava and everything creates a nice little bit of light glowing up underneath there. Oh, so happy with that. So, I hope you guys take care of yourselves until the next episode, and I'll see you then. <laughs> Bye-bye, everyone. See you in the next one. Whoop!